Hey man, hold up. You've got to check out this new frame I just got. Huh? What do you think? Oh, nice. What's different about this one? Are you kidding me? This is the Sabrosa Ohm V5 Dance Competition Super McFlare to Whip to Pedals 3000. It's a prototype. We're talking full 4130 Hydroform and Investment Cast Chromoly Construction with quad angle gussets, an externally machined carburetor, triple butted bottom bracket ball joints, removable and auto regenerating brake mounts, pop up headlights for night riding, tapered dropouts, and the seat tube doubles as a Pez dispenser. This all sounds awesome, but what does half that stuff even mean? I have no idea. Welcome back, YouTube. It is a brisk morning out here today. I've got two jackets on, but if you see me shivering, that's what it is. I apologize. It is what it is. But anyway, not long ago in this exact spot, in fact, we did a video that explained the differences in frame geometry and how those differences in geometry can actually affect your riding. If you haven't seen that video, uh, check it out. I'll put a link down in the description below. However, what we didn't cover in that video was the different techniques, different parts and features manufacturers use when building these frames. If you've browsed through our website at all or any manufacturer website, you've seen talks about double butted tubing, investment casting, fluting, gusseted, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. And we often get questions related to these exact details and what they actually mean. whoop de doo what does it all mean, Basil? Now for your average consumer, this all may seem like marketing lingo. And in some cases, maybe it is. But generally, BMX has some really good engineering behind it. And in most cases, all of these features all serve a purpose, whether it be for weight savings, strength, or what have you. So get ready, because we're going to dive in on this one. Now we're going to focus on frames in this video, but many of these features are used in other parts like forks, bars, and cranks. So let's start first with a head tube and work our way back. Head tubes are pretty straightforward. This frame has an integrated head tube. As you can see, the top and bottom of the head tube are actually flared out a little bit to accept an integrated headset. With an integrated headset, all you do is drop the bearings in place and it makes installation super easy. It's one of the most common types of headsets used in BMX today. Now I don't have one with me today, but on a standard head tube, this flare would not be here. And what you would do is actually press the bearing cup directly into the frame. And that cup actually houses the headset bearings. Standard head tubes are definitely still around and popular in budget-minded bikes and even in aluminum race frames where it's more difficult for them to form that integrated head tube shape. Easy enough, right? Now let's move back a little bit further from the head tube to the gussets. In short, a gusset, and again, we're talking about specifically BMX frames here, is an extra plate of material, in this case, chromoly, that is used to join and reinforce the junction between your main tubes and your head tube. As frames just got lighter and lighter over the years, these gussets became essential to ensure the strength of the frame. That way you can keep the thinner, lighter tubing everywhere else, but these gussets provide that extra material needed to increase the weld surface and maximize strength in those essential areas, especially the head tube area, which is where a lot of force is applied. Another gusset technique you might see is what's called a hydroform gusset. This is pretty common on aluminum race frames or even some uh, chromoly freestyle frames like We The People, for example, uses hydroform gussets. Uh, hydroforming is a process in which high pressure fluid is actually injected into the tube, uh, causing it to expand to your desired shape. This provides similar results in that you are increasing that weld surface without actually adding any extra material like you do a plate gusset. Hey, the sun's finally out. Squirrel. Anyway, distractions. From the gussets leads us to the top and down tubes. And this is where things start to get a little bit more interesting in terms of uh, frame building. This frame has butted tubing. Uh, the term butted tubing means the tubing is actually thicker in some areas and then thinner in others. For example, this Ohm V2 is advertised as having double butted top and down tubes. Double butted meaning the material changes thicknesses twice, hence the term double butted. So what they're doing is they're actually increasing the internal thickness of the tube. So the tubing is left thicker, usually near the ends, near the high stress point areas, such as the head tube junction and the seat tube junction. And they're leaving the tube thinner in the center to reduce unnecessary weight. Because let's be honest, 
Who really wants to ride a sub seven pound frame again like they did in the early to mid 2000s? My back, oh, my back. Butted tubing is extremely common in forks and handlebars as well. And on handlebars, you'll sometimes even see triple butted tubing, which again means the tubing is changing thickness three times. Now from the main tubes, we go on to the bottom bracket, which there are really two main types these days, which is mid found on both of these frames here, then also Euro, which is typically found more on racing frames. Of course, there are others like American, Spanish, BB86, but mid and Euro are really the standouts most common these days. I mean, really bottom brackets could almost be their own video, but it would probably be really, really boring. <laughs> The reason I bring bottom brackets up here is because you will sometimes hear the terms internally machined and externally machined bottom bracket shell. They're all internally machined to some degree, especially a mid bottom bracket where the bearings actually need a place to set against. But when a company externally machines their bottom bracket shell, what they're doing is they're actually removing extra material around the shell to again further reduce weight. Another common type of weight saving method is tapered tubing. This is just as it sounds. The tubing is actually thicker in one area and tapers to a smaller diameter near the end. This is commonly used on seat stays and chain stays to help shed a little extra weight while still providing some good strength. You will often see tapered seat tubes, that's pretty common, and even tapered top and down tubes, although it's not quite as common as butted tubing. A lot of frames these days also use a technique called investment casting, which investment casting is a great way for companies to consistently produce smaller, often more intricate parts in large quantities while still retaining some really good strength. This has really blown up in popularity within the last five to 10 years, especially on forks where you'll see a lot of investment cast dropouts. In short, a mold is created and molten chromoly is actually poured into that mold. Once cooled, the mold is removed and you're left with your precision part. You'll often see investment casting used on things like integrated seat post clamps, as well as on dropouts, a chain stay and seat stay bridges, like on the Sabrosa here, just gives it a really clean, unique look. Some companies like We The People have even used it on things like their head tubes and their seat tube junctions. Investment casting is actually a really old manufacturing technique, but of course has just been perfected over the years and used in automotive industry and of course BMX with great success. Great success! This finally leads us to the dropouts, which are commonly available in either 3 8 inch for race bikes or 14 millimeter for freestyle bikes like on this Verde and the Sabrosa here. Of course, like bottom bracket sizes, there are other dropout sizes out there. You've got 15 millimeter and 20 millimeter for racing, but you know, 98% of BMX frames out there use either a 3 8 inch or 14 millimeter dropout. Dropouts are gonna come either investment cast, which we discussed earlier, or you'll see them uh, advertised as being laser cut or CNC machined. Both laser cut and CNC machined are fairly similar in that they cut out the shape of the dropout from a solid piece of chromoly. Uh, sometimes you'll even see a company that will say they laser cut the dropouts out and then they'll do CNC machine reliefs cut into the inside of the dropout just to further reduce weight. Either of these styles, you really can't go wrong. Some, but not all dropouts, will even include integrated chain tensioners, which allow you to center the rear wheel into the dropouts while also keeping your chain nice and tight. So it's a win-win. If your frame comes with it, great. It's just a nice extra feature to have. Now, obviously there are more features and building techniques out there than the ones we listed in this video, but those are really the most common ones. And we don't want this video to go on for hours. I do wanna mention Sunday's proprietary wave tubing, which just as it sounds, the tubing is actually formed in a wave pattern. You'll see that on the high-end Sunday frames, and it just promotes dent resistance and also increases strength at the same time. Sunday has a really good write-up on their website if you wanna learn more about it. Another one that comes to mind is still in spiral fluted or vortex tubing. This is a process in which they'll start with a thicker, stronger tube, then actually cut it in a spiral pattern to get rid of some of that extra weight while retaining the strength and dent resistance of the thicker tube. And the end result just looks really cool too. Cool, huh? It's very cool, that was a smart buy. Now I know this video had a lot of information in it and you may have to watch it a couple times to really get a good grasp of it all, but I hope you learned something. And of course, if you have any questions at all, feel free to post those in the comment section below. We try to get back to everybody on there. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share. It really does help out. Now all this frame talk, I have yet to ride the new bike. So I'm gonna go do that now. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see everybody in the next video. This is the Sabrosa Ohm V5 Dan's Competition Super Mick Flip to Edition Super Mick Flip.
Super McFlare to whip the pedals three. Okay. <laughs>